All right, hello class. Gonna give just a second for everybody to log on and then we're gonna start. This is week three of our watercolor sessions. Um, so what we're gonna do is a little bit different from what I normally do where we do like one project in a class or like a couple concepts in a class. And I'm gonna take two today just to make sure that we have enough time um, to do our watercolors. And then I'm also, what I'm doing is I printed out an image that I made on the computer digitally. So one of the hard things for me about watercolors is you have to make your choices kind of before you start on what colors you're gonna use. Um, you can't like put down one color for something and then change your mind about it later. Um, so what I did is I just made this really quick uh, digital image um, and I'm, it's a mermaid because it's mermaid. I don't know if any of you have done mermaid before. Um, I've tried and never got very far just because of other obligations with the summer. But I decided I'm going to do this but as a watercolor painting. So it's going to look a little bit different. Um, but there are a couple ways that I can go about this. I have to get this image as a sketch onto my watercolor paper because again the thin printer paper isn't going to take watercolor very well so i could try to just redraw it by hand onto the watercolor paper and then just go with that or i could do what's called a transfer or like a tracing of this image onto the watercolor paper so the first thing that i'm going to do today is show you how to do that so if you have an image or something in your sketchbook or something like that that you've already done that you want to try to do a watercolor painting of for practice, um, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then we'll move on and then do the rest of the painting like normal. Um, does anybody have a drawing or an image? Did anybody bring an image today that they, could, that they wanna do a watercolor painting of? Okay, well, if you want to go back later after the class, you can always do that. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, all you need to do for a transfer, you need the original image, a pencil, and then some kind of ballpoint pen, and probably an eraser later on. So what I'm going to do, once I flipped it over, I can still see the original outline of the drawing. So I'm just going to loosely shade over the back side of this image. And I'm not going to do the whole piece of paper. I'm mostly just going to do the outside lines. And what I'm doing here is I'm just creating a layer of pencil lead on the back of the sheet of paper. And then when I flip it over, and trace it onto the watercolor paper, it's gonna leave behind a little groove of graphite. So I'll have like a ready to go sketch. And again, it does not have to be clean. I'm just gonna be nice and messy. If you're doing this with a drawing on your sketchbook and you don't want to ruin the drawing that you've already done, you can use tracing paper as well. Um, and then just trace over the drawing in your sketchbook onto the tracing paper and then cover the back of the tracing paper with pencil lead. And you can use this exact same technique and that'll work too. So I'm just covering the character. very quickly. I'm going to try to do this fast so the whole class isn't the transfer part. So you can see when I rubbed it off, there's a layer of pencil lead on the back of this drawing. All right. Now what I'm going to do, 
I'm going to take my watercolor paper. Again, I'm using cold press watercolor paper just because I like the texture, but any watercolor paper, paper will work. And I'm gonna to try to center this image onto the watercolor paper. And it's a little bit bigger. The watercolor paper is a little bit bigger than my initial drawing. So I can just lightly tape it like that. Because the worst part about tracing is when you start tracing and then the top image moves and then you're misaligned. So I'm just going to make sure neither of these sheets of paper are going to move. And then I'm going to take my ballpoint pen and just trace over the whole drawing with my ballpoint pen and transfer the lines onto the watercolor paper. And the reason I use ballpoint pen is because of they're cheap and then the tip of it is kind of round. What you want to do is you want to be able to see what you've traced over and what you haven't so you don't miss anything. And then another thing you want to watch out for is when you're pushing down, you don't want to gouge the watercolor paper either. You want to do a transfer. Let's actually just do this so you can see it. We'll do the tail. Let's start with the tail. So I, you want to have enough pressure to transfer the line and transfer the pencil lead onto the watercolor paper where you want it to go but you don't wanna press down so hard that you're gouging out the watercolor paper and creating a dent in it. So hopefully the camera is picking it up right here. I'll finish the tail and then show you again. I can see it on the camera. You can see it? Oh, perfect. Yeah. So it's a very light line. Let me move the paint out of the way. I'm going a little bit fast so we can just get through this part to get to the actual interesting like painting part. Um, but I wanted you guys to see this because it is a very helpful technique to have. So if you have something, um, you can do this with reference images as well. Let's say you have a reference and you want to paint it. Um, but maybe like you've tried drawing it and it's a little bit difficult, you know, you could always just transfer it and trace it and then go from there and it cuts out a step. So it's a little bit easier to get, just get started on a painting right away. And then it also, if you wanted to fix something, like if you did a sketch of a character, but you're like, oh, maybe, I want to have, like I sketch the character sitting, but I want them standing. You know, you could transfer the top half of the character to a page and then redraw the legs as standing, you know, whatever pose. So up in hand, it's, it's not just for doing watercolor routines. You can do this technique all the time. So there's the tail. And again, I'm not getting the exact lines there's going to be little gaps and stuff like that that's fine you know we're not trying to get a pretty sketch onto this paper the goal is to give us a starting point with this character fairly quickly so i don't have to keep resketching it there's a question in the chat yeah how do you use masking fluid do you paint it on or something yes so i can go over masking fluid again. Um, where's my masking fluid? So here's my bottle of masking fluid. Um, so it's just a liquid. So it's kind of like liquid glue. Um, and then wherever, 
what you do with it is like, let's say I want this eye on this character to be completely white. I would put some masking fluid over this little bit of circle and then I can just paint over it, you know, as much as I want and then wait for the paint to dry and then scrape off the masking fluid once it's dry and I'll still have a pure white paper. So I wouldn't use it for huge areas, but for little areas, again, like eyes, um, this is great for that. You can use brushes for them, but it is also like glue. So don't use a brush that you're gonna later use paint with because it won't be kind to your brush. Your brush will end up being a little bit gummy. Um, and then if it's, if it's having a hard time going down, dip the brush in soapy water and that helps it grab the glue a little bit better and um, and then you can put it on. I, I'm probably gonna try to use masking fluid again on this eye because I think that will be helpful. Um, but yeah, you can use just the tip, you know, if it's a small enough area, sometimes I just dab it on with this, um, but you can also use a brush with it. Just make sure it's a brush that you're only gonna use for glue type things because it is very sticky. Hopefully that answers the question on mask liquid. It's a cool substance. If you don't have mask liquid, you can also use tape as well, like I've been using on the edges of my paper. Um, you just have to cut out the tape to be the right shape and then make sure it doesn't get um, too wet and peeled off. So there, there's advantages to both. Tape is usually a little easier to come by. Um, masking fluid is easier to get on, but then you have to make sure that it's completely dry when you start painting over. And then you have to scrape it off afterwards and that can get annoying. So I'm going a lot faster with this transfer than I normally do. Normally I'm a little more careful. Um, but again, this isn't gonna be like the final lines of my piece. It's more just for size and placement and things like that. So I'm not tracing over every line in the hands and things like that. I'm not gonna get every detail because watercolor is kind of playful. You don't always know where it's gonna go. So it might go someplace different than in this version of the drawing. All right, these fingers, I think I'm just gonna do like the outside. I'm not just gonna, I'm not gonna draw any of the individual fingers. I try to pick an image that has a lot of space to it and not a lot of fine details, but there's still some small, tiny little bits. I think the shoe has a lot of tiny little bits on it, his Crocs. Does anybody wear Crocs anymore? I know that was a thing. Another tip for you guys, if um, you do end up trying to do a transfer like this, I have a black ballpoint pen just because that's what I had. If you happen to have the ballpoint pen that's another color, like a red or something. Um, try that because it, the red will pop out and then it's very easy to see where you've traced and where you haven't. The black was at least different because the outline for this originally was purple. But sometimes it's a little hard to see. 
Yeah, I feel like Crocs became a meme like overnight. <laughs> they just showed up in stores and everyone's like, what are these? Yeah, so with the hair, I'm not gonna get like every bit of hair. I'm just gonna do a, like the outside of it to kind of get the direction and maybe like this bit over here. Cause then when I do the watercolor, it's probably gonna look a little bit different. Whenever, I don't know if anyone likes to take drawings they've already done and do it in a new medium, um, but that can be a lot of fun to do cause it's gonna turn out a little bit different and then you don't have to like rethink a whole new image of what it's gonna look like. So you can kind of compare. All right. Another habit I get into, I taped three sides. I didn't tape the fourth side. So I can lift it up and then slowly roll it back and see if I got everything. So I missed this side of the arms and I missed these things. And then as always, when you're working with tape, um, this tape does a pretty good job of not sticking to my paper and ripping it, but it can rip it. So be very careful. Okay, so some of it didn't transfer, so we're gonna finish this bit of the arm. And then, I don't know why that's not transferring, but it's starting to gouge a little bit, so. I'm just gonna leave it, because I have the general idea of where I want the mermaid to go. Finish pulling this off. And that's going to be it for the transfer. I'm going to lift it up. So it's very light, which is what we want. Sometimes if there's too much graphite everywhere when we're doing watercolor, it can interfere with the paint particularly on lighter colors. And then if you were very generous on the underside with your graphite, you might get smudges everywhere, um, but they are usually very light. So all you have to do is just take an eraser or a kneaded eraser and kind of pick up the stray bits of graphite. I'm gonna touch up this area just cause the face is important. I want to be sure that I know where all of her features are. When I start the painting. Okay. So there are two main ways you can go about starting a painting. Um, you can start with the character and kind of work your way out, or you could do the background around the character and then paint the character. And I'm gonna do it that way. There's no like right or wrong way. It's really what you're most comfortable with. Um, but I'm gonna start by doing the background first and then getting to the character after the background is dry. Are there any questions on transferring while I get my equipment out? Oops. Some water right where my paper is gonna go, so I'm gonna make sure I clean that up. So again, to recap, for watercolor, it's really hard 
to paint lighter once you've already gotten the color down. So I generally try to do the lightest areas first and then work my way to the dark areas. So we're not gonna get this dark that quickly. Um, if you'll notice, there's like a light blue kind of haloing around her. So we're gonna start with that and build up and build up and get darker and darker. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the actual character part as well. So I have all my paints out. I'm focused mainly on blues and greens for this background, keep it kind of watery. So I have a blue ready to go and a green ready to go. And I've cleaned off a space from last time so I can mix colors if I want to. And then I'm going to start painting wet on wet. So with my brush, I'm just gonna take pure water and then go around the character. And that's gonna give a very defined barrier for the paint to go through. So I'm not gonna mask off the character really. This is kind of my masking. I'm gonna say, okay, everywhere I want the background to be, I'm just gonna paint pure water. And then while it's still wet, I'll tap in some paint. So I'm trying to go to the edge of the character and no further. But because I didn't draw lines, if I do mess up and paint over the edge of the character, it's fine. I can always redraw those lines later. This would have been easier with a bigger brush. I'm also not going to go all the way to the edge of the paper. I want it to be really dark around the character and then do a gradient outwards. Let's mix up this blue a little bit. So this is a very bright blue. And I'm gonna use a lot of water to start out with, just so it's a very light color. All right, so you can see it's already starting to run, but the paint will do a pretty good job of stopping where I stop painting the water. I just realized I forgot to tape down my paper. <clears throat> I was too excited. I'm like, let's jump in to throw some paint on this. I forgot to tape down my sheet of paper. All right. I want to feather this out so there's no edges. I got ahead of myself. Now, because I'm not painting to the edge on the sheet of watercolor paper, I don't have to fully cover all of the edges, but I also don't want the paper to move while I am painting. I don't know if it matters. The bottom of the paper is off camera just a little, but we can okay. still see the, the, the tail. Still see the bottom? Yeah. Okay. Actually, I'll just move the camera a tiny bit. I don't think that worked. The tail is a little cut off. What was that? The tail is just slightly cut off at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, I think it's gonna just fall back down. It's having a hard time holding it up that high. This is a nine by 12 paper, by the way. So it's a little, it's bigger than what I've been working with. 
which is why I also gave this two weeks instead of one week. Um, so you'll notice that the paper is kind of puffing up where it's wet. That's normal. After the whole painting is dry, um, I'll stick it under some heavy books and stuff like that if I want it to be flat. Um, the tape also helps to kind of flatten the drawing a little bit, um, but it's okay if it puffs up. It's fine. Just part of working with water. Okay, there we go. All right, let's get back to business. So I did, I'm gonna do this in sections. I kind of did that main section. I'll go over and then do this side now. I don't know what that is. Get out of my painting. So I'm just going to go back and forth, section to section, building up from light to dark. And I'm not painting, I'm trying not to touch the pencil lines as I go through. So if you want to leave a little bit of a gap, just so the water doesn't touch your character. Is it a little bit easier? If something like a hair from your paintbrush falls onto the paint, that's okay. It'll come off when it's dry as well. Sometimes I can catch it with the wet brush and then just pick it up. I'm just dotting in some paint and letting the water kind of run with it. So it'll leave a bit of a texture behind. So you have little puddles where it's darker. I like to keep that around the character. So it'll have a nice gradient. You can do it the opposite way as well, where the corners of your painting are darker and then it gets lighter and lighter towards the character too. Um, when you do that, you would just kind of do the opposite of what I'm doing and your puddles of water would start in the corner of the image and then you can just gradient out. And I'm going right to the tape. And the tape will act as a barrier I can paint over the tape as much as I want. But when I peel it off at the end of the, the painting after it's all dry, it will still look white. Are there any questions about this so far? I feel like it's pretty 
self-explanatory, but. Okay, I did this part because there's bigger areas is a little bit easier. This around the face and the top of the head, there's a lot smaller areas, so I'm going to have to be a little more careful. I'll leave myself plenty of space. I may switch to a smaller brush as well if I want to get into a tight area. I want it to be a little bit dark around here as well, so. So over here is more dry. I'm gonna mix some water in there. When I'm hitting the dry paper, just add water, get it to move around a little bit more. It's okay if it's kind of messy at first. Okay, I'm gonna take a smaller brush and work into these areas right around the character's face. So sometimes once you have a puddle down there, you can move it around a little bit and like push it. And it's a little bit more controlled. than if you just went from paint to the paper directly. So I'm just pushing it into the corners very carefully. So that's going right up to those pencil lines, but not over them. It went over there a little bit, but that's okay. I can work with that. You are going to get little overlap sometimes. This is a tiny little area of background right here. Fill that in. So the goal at the end here is we'll have a nice oceany looking background, and then you'll see the white silhouette of the character popping out. One thing that I tried to do and that I didn't do here is um, whatever your dominant hand is, you wanna start opposite and work your way towards that so you're not dragging your hand over the painting. And I didn't really do that this time and I probably should have just cause it makes it a little easier. So I'm right-handed. So ideally I would start painting on the left-hand side and then work my way right. And then if you're left-handed, you would start on the right-hand side and then work your way left. But whatever, I just gotta be more careful.
I'm a little less worried about the hair side than I am on the face side because hair can kind of do whatever. I'm just using the big brush. How's everybody else doing on their pieces? If you guys want to type um, what you're working on in the chat, even if we probably, if you're painting right now, you don't want to mess with the wet paint dripping. But we can kind of share what we're working on. Okay. Pat is asking, can someone give me two animals to draw? Ooh. So it looks like Jay said um, walrus and is it Kotai? I pronounce that. Kotai are pretty cool. All right. So this where I started is mostly dry right now. So I'm just going to go back to that side and kind of go around and around working on this piece. Once you've got a layer of wet on wet, you can start doing some dry. It's just going to have a slightly different texture. I'm going to start adding some green. Oops, that way. And the cool thing about this is you don't have to be very precise. You can just kind of play around with it, let the colors mix together. Blue and green are very close to each other on the color wheel, so they usually make nice colors when they mix together. I'm kind of like tapping around. You know, you don't have to move your paintbrush back and forth across the paper if you don't want to. You know, you don't have to cover the paper evenly. You can get cool effects. See, like, I, I didn't plan how it's flowing. It's just how the paper is bending and how the water is flowing that it's doing that. So I'm just going to kind of let it. It's, it's a chill, chill medium where you can just plop some water puddles down, add some color, and then kind of see where it goes. You will get choppy looking edges around the character. Um, so for that, if that is not something that you want, you can go back over once it's dry and tighten up those edges. And then I have two water containers here. One is for cleaning the brush. And the other one is for adding water to the canvas, just so I'm not adding the water from the discolored water onto the canvas. So I'm gonna keep going with this. Um, if you have any work that you want to show at any point in the next 20 minutes, please raise your hand and then I have Scott helping me to pick those out if you want to share. 
Um, but again, as always, if you are doing a watercolor painting and you want to show, don't tip your work until it's dry because we don't want to have any accidents. Also, if you have any questions for me about any of this process, please let me know. So I'm gonna get as close to done as I can, but just like last time, this takes a little bit of time, so I don't know how far I'll be able to get. Oh, I was also going to guess, who's seen um, Mitchell's versus the Machines on Netflix? Did anybody see I have. I freaking it? love it. Yeah, isn't it amazing? Yes. No spoilers in case nobody's seen it. <laughs> but I wanted to just throw that out there. That is an awesome movie. We, we just watched it last night. You just watched? Oh, just last night? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it's really great. Yeah. It had a lot of, if anyone's seen Gravity Falls and that's your jam, they had a lot of people on Gravity Falls also worked on that. It kind of has a similar like spirit to it, so similar vibe to it. So if that's something you'd be interested in, check out Mitchell's versus the Machines. Has anybody seen a movie or a TV show recently they'd like to recommend to everybody? Bad Batch. I have not seen Bad Batch yet, but I've heard good things. Is it similar to um, Mandalorian or is it a different like tone? It's in the style of Clone Wars, but everything's been touched up. It's all so, so nice. The Ooh. first episode is 70 minutes and so far all the others have been 30. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that has been on my radar as a thing to check out. All right, so I don't have a lot of freedom in this area, so that's why I'd use a very small brush to kind of tap in that green. And then I can take a bigger brush and spread it out and make it more of a gradient. Did anybody else have a TV show recommendation or a movie recommendation? I'd like to recommend Castlevania on Netflix. Ooh. Yeah, Castlevania is really cool. Can I recommend something that's not out yet, but I'm sure that will be good? Is it like, like, uh, is like the trailer out for it or? Um, or was it like just announced? Just announced. Just announced? Okay, what, what is it? The Wings of Fire TV series is going to be coming out on Netflix. Ah, cool. Okay, is that a book series as well? It is or? a book series. It's an amazing so series? book series. 
I, I just missed the what the series was. Wings of Fire. Wings of Fire. Okay, cool. There's graphic novels in the books. Got it, got it. Okay, yeah, that's what I was asking. So are you a big fan of the book series? Yes. Yes, awesome. Yes. It's always a little little nerve-wracking when like a book series that you're a fan of gets made into a movie because like, oh, what if they just completely chuck the book and, <laughs> and do something yeah. completely different? Yes. Which happened with the Upside Down Magic movie for me, but it yeah. was still, so it was fine. Yeah. But then there's always like, oh, we can get like new fans because it will mm -hmm. introduce people. Yes. Do the thing as well. So that's really, oh, that's always really exciting. Spread this around. I'd like to share an image. Oh, excellent. I'm gonna pause so, on this. If anyone knows this character, thank you. Oh, it's so cute. Are you doing that with watercolor, Nathaniel? Huh? Are you are you painting that with watercolor? Yeah, and I'm gonna go over it with black Posca pen. Oh yes, Posca pen. Get that nice black in it. That is looking awesome. Yeah, thank you. That's really cool. They have these two puddles running into each other, but they're the same color, so it's fine. How are we on time? Okay, let's get about 15 minutes. So what I may end up doing is finishing up the rest of the background off camera if the class goes over just so I can get to the character part next time so you know that's going to be the more interesting thing to watch but gotta get the background out of the way first But hopefully it's popping up on camera, the, the silhouette of the character. If you've also been to my silhouette class, it's a really good test to see if you have an interesting looking image and a clear image um, for what's going on is if you can see it in silhouette and you can kind of still tell, like especially like where the shoe is and things like that. So it's still very wet, but you can still see the main um, gradient from the computer image I did. It looks different, but it's still a lot of the same ideas. And I'm just going to be adding splotches of different greens, darker greens, um, greens and blues and stuff like that as we move on. I'm going to go over here and mix some blue with some green just so I get a nice dark green even though this green's pretty dark when i mix it with water it lightens up a little bit um, so just as i always do most of the time with watercolor i start out with a really watered down paint and then i will add more and more paint as i go through so it's just going to be the same with the watercolor the paint's going to get thicker and thicker as i build up these gradients so and i have a nice like turquoisey blue thing this is more dry. So I'm going to start doing little pockets of this dark blue green. Just 
just in random places. And if I feel like it needs more gradient, you know, I just add more water and kind of push it out and the water will fade it out. I still want to keep it really dark around the character. I finished my image. Would you like to see? Oh, absolutely. Oh, that looks awesome. So you see with the Posca paint, it really pops out. Um, Nathaniel's doing the same technique that I'm doing where you like you paint it first and then put the lines on. You can also do the reverse. If you are more comfortable drawing the lines and then painting over that, um, you can do that too. You just have to make sure that the ink is dry. But yeah, that's looking awesome, Nathaniel. Love those finished clean lines. Did anybody else want to share any work that they've been doing? Even if it's not a uh, watercolor painting. That's cool too. All right. Hey, Kat. Hey, Kat. Um, so I needed those animals because I did not know what to draw. So here is my beginning of, um, it's nowhere near to finish, beginning of a walrus. Ooh. I, I don't, they're, thing. they're very different animals to try to combine. I love the shape of it, though, and like how large it is. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it if you if you colored that in and finished it. That would be awesome. Yeah. Did we have an, another I saw a hand pop out and then disappear. Was that a mistake or Here's Liliana and Heather Rose. Hello, Liliana. Hello, Heather Rose. Um, here's mine so far. Oh, that's awesome. I love how bold your colors are. I mean, it, it's upside down. It's a, yeah, yeah, I know it's <laughs> upside down, but I don't want you to move the, the painting until it's all the way dry. That's pretty cool. All right, and then let's see the other one. What? <laughs> Sonic and Friends. That is a ton of characters. My goodness. It's hard getting that many characters onto a piece with watercolor and have it, it not make a huge mess. That is awesome, ladies. Did anybody else want to share? Here's Tater. Hello. Hello, inspired by Jay's comment, I drew a Cody. Nice. I think that's They're really cool about. creatures. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks. and I like how you added like little plants behind it and stuff like that, some environment things. That is really cute. Did we get to everybody who wanted to share? I think so. I don't see any more hands.
last thing I wanted to show you guys, um, if you remember for the first class where I did a lot of like splattery stuff, um, you can do that for these bigger pieces too. You just have to be really careful that anything that you don't want having splatter on it doesn't get um, a ton of color on it. So I could do, let's pick like a safer area. Let's say over here. This is easier when the whole painting is dry. Oh, I need more water. I'm just going to cover it. You know, you can tap, tap, tap the water down. Thing will go onto your paper and you can get some nice splatter texture. And then this paper will catch it and prevent it from going like on the character where you don't want the splatter to go. So I'm probably going to do that. But once the whole background is dry, it's still wet right now. So you know, as always, be careful. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see some of the textures that are happening on the paper. So this is what happens when you have cold pressed water paper. It's a little bit bumpy. So as it absorbs the water, it will absorb it a little unevenly in pockets. So you'll get these nice bits of randomized texture in your work. Let me stop that bouncing. All right. Are there any questions on anything that we went over? Tone these down a little bit. Yes, Kat? Um, I kind of just wanted to do a last minute share. Oh, sure. I'm gonna add nails to the rest of the flippers, but. I love the pose. Thanks. That's awesome. Do you think you'll color it? Finish uh, it yeah. Or are you going to leave it? Well. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna look awesome. I'll have to decide on the color palette. I'll probably do like a gray brown, or maybe I'll like blend them in some places. I don't know. Yeah, Cody's have kind of like with their stripes. I think they have like an orangey brown. Orangey kind brown, of, like kind of first. Brown. That would be cool to inc incorporate. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, do we have any other uh, questions or anybody want to share their work before we do the parting of ways? Oh, that's awesome. All right, now we get to see it right side up. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like an abstract look, but I love how dark the colors got. That can get hard with watercolor. That is excellent, ladies. All right, well, Scott just put the uh, donation link in the chat. Uh, thank you everybody to, uh, that has donated so far. That really helps keep us going so we can keep doing these projects. Um, I know a lot of you are going to be doing different things over the summer, um, but we want to keep this going and keep it free for everybody. So thank you for all your help and your support. And then uh, thank you, Scott, as always, for helping uh, manage those classes. Have a great week, everybody. I will continue this next Monday, same time, uh, same Zoom link. Uh, so if you want to see that, go ahead and check it out. Thanks, Aileen. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. you.